Hello and welcome to the Treasury Tomorrow podcast, the series where we discuss our views on the latest and greatest innovations and disruptive forces shaping the corporate treasury of tomorrow. I'm your host, Nick Peterson, um, and today I'm joined by two distinguished guests to talk about cybersecurity. Cybersecurity is a far-reaching topic, and we're going to talk about everything from password protection to AI and machine learning with regards to network security. I think it's something that's always on the mind of corporates, always on the mind of treasuries, but potentially only gets the, the attention it deserves when, when something goes wrong. So to address what, what we need to be aware of and what we can do now, um, I'm very excited to welcome two distinguished guests. Um, Dr. Aviv Yazekel is the co-founder and CTO of Synamics, uh, an Israeli-based cybersecurity startup. Uh, and I'm joined by Catherine Graham, the head of security services at NatWest Group. Catherine, if it's going, I'm going to start start with you. What, in just um, in terms of some basic principles, what what should corporate treasurers be really cognizant of with respect to cybersecurity, and what what are some practical things that they could do in the near term to help improve resilience? For me, Nick, it doesn't matter what industry you work in. It's about recognizing that the people using your systems and applications are one of your key security risks. We all develop security behaviors throughout the course of our careers in whatever industry that we're working within. And it's really important that as the people who offer services and systems out to customers and clients, we help ensure that we're keeping things safe by helping our own teams develop better security behaviors. Michael McIntyre does a wonderful skit about passwords. He quite wittily observes that back in the 80s, we all had to create that first password. And as the requirements to add complexity were issued by organizations across the world, everyone just added an exclamation mark at the end. We're all guilty of falling into the same traps. And so it's really important that you educate your team members you know, actually, password complexity is predominantly about length, but don't set really hard extremes for your team members. Three long words to form a passphrase actually creates a really strong password. We don't need to ask people to change their passwords all the time once we've helped them to set something that is eminently secure. Well, what about things like when you get a a random email, phishing, and, and how, how do you help educate teams and people to be alert to that? There are some great learning materials out there, Nick. Action Fraud, for example, have got some really great learning sound bites that can help your teams watch out for those little tricks and tips that will help them keep your system secure. There are also ethical phishing techniques that you can use to help to educate your teams by sending them emails that are designed to look genuine and then giving them a little feedback when they click on the link to let them know that actually this is a really great example of where they could have been fished if we were um, kind of playing the game for real. That's great, Catherine. That's some really tangible uh, and, and crisp tips. I'd, I'd like to try, try and bring Aviv in now as we talk about third parties and software. Aviv, with with more and more services at a corporate um, being digital, moving to cloud-based, how does how does a, a corporate or, or an entity's network security itself become part of a cybersecurity strategy? So I think that network security is rightfully considered a foundational aspect of modern cybersecurity, because after all, whatever is going in, in our networks is traversing the network. Whatever is using our services, whatever services we are using is traversing our networks. And the network is the backbone where every communication, legit or malicious, is traversing through. So um, I believe that any, we all understand now very, very clearly that any access to resources is being made over the networks without exception. And because of this, the playing field for malicious hacks and malicious um, actions is the network itself. It provides the infrastructure on which these activities proceed. So we all need to recognize the central rule of network security 
in this broader cybersecurity strategy of our organization. But specifically, as you pointed, Nick, things become even more challenging these days as organizations' networks grow bigger in their size with more data volumes, more complex architectures. This typical network today, which is becoming a messy mix, as you said, between on-premise, physical networks, private cloud, public clouds, Amazon, Microsoft, whatsoever. And this messy architecture makes the need for network security even more critical, in my opinion. And another thought about this is that a key prerequisite for network security is to have this full network visibility and coverage of this complicated environment. And uh, I would like to, to to put this classical saying, you, you cannot secure what you cannot see, right? And indeed, a typical attack starts with some vulnerability in the network that leads farther on to some network breach. And the bad actors can then move very quickly through the network to maximize the damage and go from one place to another until they, they infected enough hosts, endpoints, devices, um, which enables them to, to launch the attack eventually. The messy mix is an, is an interesting term because as, as, as you procure more and more systems and more and more platforms, you, you, you generally try to do it to make life easier, but actually you're making network security a little bit more, more complex. Um, I mean, if you, you look at patterns in networks to identify risks and identify potential attacks. Can you tell us a little bit more about what sort of patterns you look at and how you identify from one part of the network where it may be vulnerable in another. So the key to understand here is that cyber attacks and cyber threats are not just a singular event um, that just happens one day, pops out of the blue. They, they actually, the outcome of a flow of events in your network. For example, it, it may start in just, you know, just naive browsing the web, clicking the wrong link, getting the device infected, and then having the bad actor penetrating into the network, propagating inside the network and infecting other devices, and then sending these keepalized messages, signaling that I'm still here and eventually launching the attack. So each step has a network pattern that can be detected by this next generation technologies that um, Synamics, for example, is developing, and it makes network solu solutions able to detect a very diverse uh, attacks and threats, volumetric and non-volumetric, low volume and high volume, and even new and unknown attack vectors. We, we see it every day, and we, we only hear about it too often, right, um, in the news, um, how these sophisticated attacks are keep winning against the legacy solutions. And in legacy solutions, um, I refer to approaches that are, that are looking for specific built-in attack signatures, attack rules. They are looking for very specific pre-configured alerts. They, they are told what to hunt for and they are looking for it. And th these sophisticated attacks are actually being trained to overcome this uh, built-in signatures, built-in rules. And um, the, the other um, existing approaches. So um, we, the defenders, need to follow on. We, we need to fight machines with machines to, in order to overcome and outsmart these AI attackers. And what makes AI and ML, artificial intelligence and machine learning, so helpful is the ability to detect the hidden patterns that signal attacks, to reveal what's really taking place across the networks in real time, and more importantly, to keep learning, keep evolving, and learn new unknown attacks that were not used in the training even. And by, by doing so, being unlimited to a specific set of pre-configured alerts like this legacy traditional solution. Because it's really, really important to understand, as you say, AI is actually being used by the bad actors now, and, and you need to be aware of, of that as a concept. Um, but on, on, on the topic of different channels, um, pre predominantly digital, you know, co corporates, as they go through a digital transformation, think about selling online or automating invoices. The, the way they interact with customers, um, Catherine, is, is quite diverse now. How do you see that changing um, as, as that develops? 
Customers expect and deserve you to keep their information safe and secure. It's really important that we know our customers. As we start a new customer relationship, we gather the right data about who they are and that we create an integrated system internally within our organization so that throughout that customer's journey with us, we're constantly checking that we've got the right information, we're holding that information in an appropriate manner and we're using it to perform security checks. So if you have an organization where you have a sales department in one division of your setup and you've got other teams that are likewise contacting customers, it's really important that you've got integral systems that will help you to keep a really good record of how you've been managing those interactions. And actually we can use that data to great effect. You, know, you will have seen that banks are now actually helping to educate customers about what to expect. We will reach out and explain to customers that we will never ask for your PIN number. And we're doing that because we want to protect you from fraud. And whatever industry you work within, there will be a parallel. There will be things that you know could trip your customers up. And it's about reaching out to them and giving them that awareness well in advance. That's, that's really interesting. And I, and I think we've all, all experienced that for, from our, our banks, you know, whoever we bank with on the retail side. Do, do you think corporates should think about doing that as well for, for their, their customers potentially or their supply chain? Because you could easily imagine a scenario where a corporate entity is, um, is put under threat by, by a bad actor pretending to be that entity down a supply chain. Is that something they should think about adopting? Absolutely. I think we all have a responsibility to collaborate and work together to keep our system secure and to protect our client and customer data. So if that means working with your supplier in advance to agree protocols and to agree what you're going to do if a supplier is faced with a security challenge, then that just means that you've got that time to respond. You've got that ability to work together to mitigate any potential harm that could have befallen some of your customer groups. And then, and then Aviv, so sort of touching back on, on the AI theme, um, what, one of the, I think, uh, challenges that is overwhelming is AI machine learning can be really broad. Is there a one size fits all? Is there some you know, nirvana of simple technology that companies can, can use to, to improve their cybersecurity? Or is that a, a dream state? So the appliance approach um, from, from, the, from its basics is not best aligned with one size fits all approach. But we do see next generation technologies that are overcoming these challenges. For, for example, um, new SaaS based solutions that instead of using appliances and agents and instead of um, placing them in the network, they are actually sitting outside the network. They are collecting small network samples, for example, as we do in dynamics of the network, and employing this AI advances and breakthroughs technologies in order to detect threats and attacks um, on, on, on the entire landscape, on the entire environment. In terms of those, those new technologies, and we touched earlier the, the, the concern of um, bad actors using AI to, to attack a network or to infiltrate through cybersecurity, are there any other emerging technologies um, or products that, that companies should be aware of that would really help benefit uh, the, the defense from bad actors? I would advise to look for solutions which are risk-free, means they do not increase your attack surface. Traditional solutions, as we just discussed, are using appliances and agents um, in the network. And we all saw over, over the recent years how these appliances and agents are actually being used against us as backdoors that can route directly to, to, the, to the core of our networks and being compromised by sophisticated supply chain attack, showing how these appliances are actually double-edged sword in many, in many ways. And I would advise to look for appliance-less solutions that instead of being placed inside the network and having this permissions to your, to your network, to the, to the core of your networks, to the internals of your networks, and eventually might be used against you, look for risk-free solutions that doesn't increase the risk um, of your organization network, 
and your organization's security by using them. In addition, uh, I would advise to look for solutions that do not need customizations and fine tunings. And uh, you can start and get immediate meaningful value right upon onboarding. And in addition to that, uh, look for solutions that provide some autonomous capabilities that can remove manual overhead from your team and, and from, from you and are easier to use and operate. On, on the, the arms race of, of te technology, Catherine, back, back to sort of NatWest's own own front and center strategy. You know, we talked about some basic principles, doing the basics right, but we also need to keep an eye on emerging technology. How do how do you how do we think about that as as a, as a bank, and, and what, where do we prioritize um, our, our time and effort? It can be really tempting to buy whizzy new solutions that offer you something really beneficial in the customer space, and it's really important that all organizations invest in that type of technology but it's critical that you ask those questions up front about how we're going to control access to that resource is it secure is it resilient and you kind of nail those basics right at the start of that journey with a new supplier or if you're building something internally for your own use N nail the basics first and then deploy and then look at the the new technology because you, you you could get distracted by the new technology and, and lose sight of some of the basics that that makes a lot of sense i think that's great advice um we've talked a lot about ai we've talked a lot about best practices uh, there's a lot of a lot of information that we've we've uh, bounded around but i'm going to ask you both for if there's one thing that the listeners to this podcast should take away what, what is it my key takeaway is that with today's exponential network growth in size and volume and architectures that we discussed, in this messy mix, right, of physical and cloud, the need for network security across the entire environment is becoming critical uh, than ever. And as I said before, you cannot secure what you cannot see. We must have this complete network visibility. You don't left anything behind the scenes. Don't, don't left any area of your network as blind spot calling for attacks and threats and anomalies to, to come from. And this is where new AI breakthroughs can be used and enable this for the first time, even the most complex networks out there. So be aware of the messy mix and make sure you've got full visibility over, over all of your network. Catherine, ha ha how about yourself? What's, what's the, the key takeaway that everyone needs to, to leave from today with, from your side? As business leaders, it's really important that you're inquisitive about security. When your team come to you and tell you that they have a new solution that they want to launch and they tell you it's secure, ask that key question, how do you know? When they come to you and they say that they've got a really good way for controlling access to a particular application, ask them, how do you know? And be really gently, but but constructively challenging around that. I think it's important that we test our systems. If we assert that we've got a really good way for keeping something secure, test it, make sure that that is the case and be prepared. Think about what you're going to do if something unexpected happens. We've all just been through a period of economic and social change. And what it's taught us is that sometimes things can sneak up on us and change the game a little. Think in advance about how you're going to respond. Build that core resilience, but also just keep talking about security. Ask those inquisitive questions. Okay, brilliant. So it's about culture of being inquisitive and challenging and, t and testing systems. Well, we hope you enjoyed this episode of the Treasury Tomorrow podcast. Thank you, Aviv. Thank you, Catherine, for joining us. And thanks all for listening.